Good evening. I'm Professor John Kropp. Eleven years ago, Dr. Maria Sheehan tasked me to turn the floundering Modesto Junior College Industrial Technology programs into programs that support our local manufacturing food processing industries. I have fulfilled my promise to her. I have provided you each a copy of all the supporting data demonstrating why our thriving industrial technology programs are much too valuable to be discontinued. We understand that ultimately you're making a business decision, but before you vote, I need to give you another perspective so that you avoid making a bad business decision. Our industrial technology students are in every way our customers. Our product is comprehensive technical education. Our numbers of graduates, the companies who have co contacted you individually, and the people standing in this room are visual proof of the quality of the product we deliver. If we did not deliver a quality product, they simply wouldn't be here. And our customers know that there is no educational institution in this part of the state which can consistently deliver the same quality product that we do. Our product cannot merely be repackaged or sold under another label. We work for our customers. Our customers work in the local agriculture, food processing, and manufacturing industries. And our industries provide thousands of jobs in the valley. Jobs are a precious commodity these days. Last December, the Stanislaus County unemployment rate was 17.6% and continues to trend upward. The MJC Intech programs provide the hope, advising, planning, and education to open career doorways for displaced and unemployed individuals who decide to improve their quality of life for themselves and their families. Up till now, ladies and gentlemen, my students' academic and professional futures have for the most part been in my hands. Now they're in yours. Thank you. I'm shocked as anybody that, that our board, who presumably would be community members and have contact with industry, would ignore industry. The manufacturing community uh, wrote letters to the board, they went to the board meeting, and, uh, and they were told basically they're not going to do anything about it. They're just going to go ahead and move forward canceling the program. So the industry is pretty frustrated right now. So we tend to draw the older students who have either been in manufacturing for a while and are looking for a new career, getting out of the production side into the maintenance side, or those who've been involved in maintenance but want to get a broader comprehensive education. So, so we take a lot of students who've been in an industry for most of a career and they'll come to us and, and either upgrade skills or, like I say, we, we tend to fill in the holes of their, of their foundation. Uh, the two accusations that were made against the program were that there, there are not enough jobs for our graduates and that our program is too expensive. And I run this lab on $1,600 a year. I buy my parts on eBay and I fix my own equipment. Uh, in my technical education division, I would be pretty comfortable in saying that we Industrial technology has the lowest budget of all the programs. That would include machining and automotive, auto body, welding, kitchen or high cost programs because they use a lot of consumables, gas and, and welding rod. Uh, by the school's own data, this is data generated by the school and the California Community College Chancellor's Office, our graduates find jobs between 75 and 100 percent of them depending on the program but they uh, will typically go out and start working around 20 bucks an hour and that's in a manufacturing industry so that's forty thousand dollars a year in base salary plus benefits and of course during the pack they're making a lot of overtime so the reality is many of our students within a year or two of graduating make more money than a beginning community college instructor. And, uh, and their lifetime earnings are much higher than even a university graduate because of the, 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 the pay. But that's, that's not what parents want to hear. Parents want to hear that their children should go to a university. And uh, those numbers don't work anymore. That model does not work. Well, we learn like on hands-on training in here. Um, that's why our, my company hires me to come to school. 
and they actually pay for my tuition and everything. Um, basically, we have a print, we have to follow by the print, we learn how to read the print, and then we have to come out here and build it and put it together and make sure it runs. And then our, our instructor will come out here, he has little fault switches hidden behind the trainers right there, which actually causes a problem. And we have to actually troubleshoot and figure out what causes the, problem, the fault. And that gives us the real hands-on training and everything we, that we get in the field. Uh, you should all have a binder that looks something like this on your, in front of you. I think they're aware enough to go around. And uh, I'm going to give you just, it feels like the first day of class where I'm trying to get my students to look at their textbook. Well, I want you guys to look at this and really read it over because I, along with uh, Professor Kropp of Industrial Technology, put probably a hundred hours into this over the last ten days. And I want you to look at the picture at the top of the page. Uh, since the picture is worth a thousand data points, I, I want you to look at those guys. Those are industrial technology graduates. They're really not that small. It's just that there's too many of them to fit into the photo. Because industrial technology graduates account for half the graduates in the division. The other tab, the other tabs, tab two, shows you that um, the EDD projects over 300 jobs per year for those in-tech students. Um, tab uh, four gives you the data on the retention rates, which are in the 90s, and the success rates, which are in the 70s, which are both higher than, than the average for the rest of the college. The data that the president used was some report uh, from, from the county. In fact, the people that generated the report were a little upset that he used that. The same report claimed that the number, I think number five and number seven jobs in our county currently are elementary school and high school teaching, which is just absolutely not true. There are no teaching jobs in Stanislaw County, or very few. Um, so he, he went around our own data. The data that I have, the data about our programs, comes from the College Office of Research and Planning, which the President has access to. This data says not only is our program successful, um, our program could be much more successful with a little bit more support, and that we, or it's a myth that we don't generate enough revenue. We make more revenue per full-time faculty than two-thirds of the programs at this college. And we've always had this myth that technology courses are too expensive. If, if you could claim that MJC paid for everything here, that might be true. But they didn't. This is paid for by the state, by the community, by grants, and in some part to MJC. But financially, we've had uh, we, not enough support. that it goes in between. Once we get position, we put that part on. So we get a real nice score, so it just folds real nice and clean. So. The printing that's done in here is envelopes, business card, letterheads, brochures, posters, etc. whatever people want done in a print shop. It's pretty wide open as far as that goes. And we have Irene, the graphic art specialist, who works with all of the college clients in designing part of the time and other times making sure that what was created outputs to the pre-press area up front and then goes through the process and gets printed and finished. A lot of our students have gone out, say for instance, Pacific Southwest Container and they get hired in as a feeder on the press. Many of the people within the company, they may start doing a lesser job and then they bid to get into those areas and when they go to those areas that they get as much as they can out of that training and also are better at asking questions of why is that happening because it's one thing to just do something but it's another to know why uh, a particular thing happens when you do it on the press. This is every year our program actually printing department and students help out with a lot of it. Uh, they print the graduation program. 
Uh, we foil stamp, we emboss it, we fold it, score it, stitch it so the machine over here puts the stitch in. And interestingly enough, the guest speaker this year for the program is an alumni graduate from Modesto Junior College, Cheryl She's Dell. The, she was uh, Sacramento the Sacramento B. And so she gets to speak at a graduation where her program and my program, which prints the stuff that they write and all, is being eliminated. That's kind of ironic that that's happened. Yeah. But. And then the new press that we just paid our fourth payment of uh, seven years. Uh, it's about 28000 or 26000 a year. It's $170,000 press, so our students have a piece of equipment that really sets them up and prepares them, and you see some of the color work that was done uh, is beautiful that, that our students are printing on here. So we can do two colors, it's a two color press, and you can see it's digitally controlled here. So uh, all of the controls, so even our presses are becoming digital. Uh, it's a fabulous training device for us that uh, unfortunately won't be able to use. I lost my job due to the mortgage downturn. I was in the mortgage industry. In readjusting, we moved to Modesto, brought our two small children, and I enrolled here in Modesto Junior College. I've been going through Alan Lane's program, and I have to say, as the struggling, you know, just trying to find our ground, being self-employed, I've looked to this department to help me move forward in this in this time. Communication graphics is everywhere. We read it, it's in print, it's in media. We see it all over the place. And the program that's in place here at Modesto Junior College is amazing. And I ask that before you take your vote, that you take time to tour the facility that Mr. Lane has set up, the print shop, the machinery there that the students are being trained on is something that all of the community can benefit from. I know as a business owner, I've looked to MJC in the media department. We own a photo studio and we do videography and we've hired several students from the media department to assist us when we do jobs. We've looked through the graphics department to help us when we needed to do media and promote our business. So I do ask that you look at the program and look what it does to our community. It helps us, the small business, just trying to succeed in this economic. Thank you. I, I think if you look at any other institution of this size that needs a, a printing facility, the fact that the communication graphics program is what the print shop grew out of because it was very symbiotic in the sense that the students in the classes printed the work for the college, so it was a win-win situation as far as um, getting it done for less expensive than outside. Plus we. We get a lot of contract pricing because we are a state institution, so you get paper at contract pricing and um, a lot of other services. The funding for the print shop here is, is very small. When you consider we get $1,500 a year to run the materials and all the repairs and, and, the, and purchase equipment and even the film and the ink, well, $1,500 doesn't last us a month. So out of, out of the two semesters that we're open here. So the rest of that is charged back. It, we get the money from charging it back to the divisions that use our services, but they, they still get it for a really reduced rate. So it's, it's unheard of that everything you see here is paid by the jobs we produce, except for our salaries and of course the overhead. I mean, we're not saying that the college, um, and we are under the MJC umbrella, and that's one of the, the things that they probably have contention with is that MJC is paying for the savings that the district is enjoying and also that central services enjoys is the overheads being completely um, taken in by the instruction side of MJC. So that might be one of the things we're hoping to take a look at and still see the value of having the shop here. And, and the, the things that the little things they don't see are what are going to make the big difference as far as like student workers. If we didn't have four, we have four to six student workers working all the time here during the two semesters and one completely through the summer just to keep up with the workload. So it'll be interesting to see um, what happens when that comes to a screeching halt at the end of next week.
Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, this hurts me because I went here 68 through 70 and had my fabulous program cut. But that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about what's happened to us. And we've done things that are going to hurt this community for a long time that we aren't going to have the support. And I hope that somebody can work together and turn some of this around because this is a fabulous college which me and other people loved and loved teaching here and promoted it over and over and over to people. And now we hear it all the time, what are they doing? I can't get a class and I can't get this and that. And that is what we're doing. And please don't let my wonderful college turn into something terrible. Thank you.